Hello everyone, I once again welcome you all to MSB lecture series on interpretive spectroscopy. You must be very happy now because I will be solving from here onwards problems. One thing you should remember when we are learning science subjects and if we learn those subjects through problem and those subjects are not a problem at all. Okay. For example, chemistry is not a problem if it is learned through problems, mathematics is full of mathematics full of problems and if we solve problems, understanding mathematical uh, logic, everything would be very easy. Similarly, physics is full of problems and if we learn physics through problems and physics is not a problem. And similarly, spectroscopy and if we learn spectroscopy through problems uh, using our basics, uh, it is not a problem. So, it is enjoyable. So, let us start uh, problems. The next eight to nine lectures, I will be focusing on solving very, very different type of problems, having data from all these spectroscopic methods that I had discussed in my last 50 lectures or so. So, let me begin with uh, some simple questions, simple problems and then go on to little bit more complex problems. Let us look into mass spectrometer related problem here. The question is, what are the masses of the charged fragments produced in the following cleavage pathways, two reactions are there. What you have to do is you have to identify the masses of the charged fragments produced in the following pathways and also the what kind of fragmentation happens is also given here. The first one is alpha cleavage of triethylamine. The second one is McLafferty rearrangement of 4 methyl 2 pentanone. Let us look into one at a time. In order to know about the fragment and its mass, we should know the reaction. For example, what is the molecule we are considering and what kind of breakage happens and when the breakage happens, what kind of fragments comes out. So, let us begin first with alpha cleavage of triethylamine. Let me write here we have lone pair. To have a better picture of cleavage, I have expanded something like this. Now, the cleavage occurs here. Of course, we are considering a radical cation. When it proceeds through alpha cleavage, we get is this one here. So, if you just look into this one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are there, C 5, H 12 and N and if you look into M by Z value, this will be 86. So, that means uh, 16 plus 12 plus 14, 86. So, this is the one they have asked for. What are the mass of the charged fragment? In case of alpha cleavage of triethylamine, the mass of the charged fragment produced is 86. Now, let us look into the second one here. So, this one is 4 methyl 2 pentanone. Now, for convenience of showing uh, this rearrangement, I would write in a little different way. Of 
Okay, this is this where it is going to fragment. And now if we just see here, yes. Now once we know that one, the job is done. For this one, molecular weight is 100. And this one is C6H12O. So this would give this rearrangement. So this portion I'm writing here. Just look here, this is C3, H6, O, this is this is 58, and then this one is Mz equal to 36 plus 6 plus 42. So this is the one the question is asking for. So here, this is one in case of this one, the equals 58. And in this case, equals 86. So this is the answer for this question. What are the masses of the charged fragments produced in the following cleavage pathways? In case of alpha cleavage of triethylamine, so that means how to do this one while discussing mass spectrometry. I showed you the fragmentation of different functional groups in organic molecules. And if you are familiar with those things, if you look into amides, amines, alcohols, uh, ketones, aldehydes, you will be knowing. Once you know those things, you should be able to split accordingly to give the right kind of fragments the question is seeking from uh, you people. So this is the one. This is how you can do it. I hope you have understood this one. And now let us go to another very simple like problem. What is the frequency of a wave with a wavelength of 200 centimeters? Now of course, we are familiar with energy, how it is related to frequency, E equals h nu, and nu equals c by lambda, where c is the velocity of light, it is 3 into 10 raised to 10 centimeters per second, or 3 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second. So we can use here, and uh, 200 centimeter is the wavelength given here. If you calculate, what you get is, of course, here uh, 1.5 it comes. It will be 1.5 into 10 raised to 8 hertz. This is the answer. Very very simple here. Once we know the equation from this one, we can calculate wavelength if the frequency is given. If the frequency is given, wavelength can be con considered, or if wavelength is given, frequency can be calculated, or we can also calculate the energy corresponding to that frequency of electromagnetic radiation. Now, another one, a radio transmits a frequency of 100 hertz. What is the wavelength of this one? Again, you can use the same analogy here. So here, 100, nu is given here. Nu equals 100 hertz is given here. We have to calculate the wavelength. So nu equals C by lambda. In the same way, lambda equals C by nu. So this will correspond to C will be 3 into 10 raised to 10. And then here we have 100. So it gives. So centimeters. And it can convert this into 10 into 10 raised to 6 meters. So this is the answer for this one. Because 10 goes, it becomes minus 2. It becomes minus 8. Minus 2, it becomes 3 into 10 raised to 8. So one can convert some of those things very nicely, provided we remember this one, very easy to remember. So now, without calculations, simply by reading, you should be able to answer which molecule 2,5 heptadiene or 2,4 heptadiene would you predict to have a lower heat of hydrogenation? So just look into that one and probably try to write uh, the molecular formula. Once if you write it, you can notice that in 2,4 heptadiene, what we have is we have conjugation. 
if the conjugation is there what happens pi pi star gap lowers as a result what happens reactivity increases that means if you want to do hydrogenation it needs low heat of hydrogenation so that means basically it's 2 4 heptadiene so i would predict 2 4 heptadiene to have lower heat of hydrogenation than 2 5 heptadiene this is due to the conjugation between the double bonds in 2 4 heptadiene which is stabilizing so very simple answer and also very simple analogy and also while discussing about uv spectroscopy we did mention that conjugation extensive conjugation brings the homo lumo gap one should remember that one and what is the energy range for 400 nanometer and 500 nanometer in the uv spectrum where a compound absorbs so here again we should use energy we have to calculate now earlier we are converting wavelength into frequency frequency into wavelength in this one what we should do is we should calculate the energy associated with 400 nanometer as well as 500 nanometer radiation so we should use e equals h nu we should use that is 6 point into meter okay. so if you simplify this one what it gives is 4.965 into 10 raised to minus 90 joules so what we have done is everything is in given in meter for example velocity of light is 3 into 10 raised to 10 centimeters that should be made into 3 into 10 raised to 8 so here also we have made it 10 raised to 7 and then if you just take this one to numerator and we get this value here so this is the one for 400 how about 500 in the same way we can calculate So this will give you a value of 3.3. Three. That means what is the energy range? The energy range will be from 3.972 into 10 raised to minus 19 to 4.965 into 10 raised to minus 19 joules. So this is the range uh, that is asked in this question now let's look into which one would absorb a longer wavelength 1 3 cyclohexadiene or 1 4 cyclohexadiene a similar question i discussed about heptadiene so now you can see here in this one 1 3 we have conjugation and here no conjugation is there so obviously this would absorb longer wavelength so 1 3 cyclohexadiene would absorb longer wavelength more conjugation in the molecule, longer the wavelength absorbed because the gap is lower. If the gap increases, wavelength decreases and frequency increases. This also again is a simple question. Now, where is radio frequency radiation on the energy scale of the electromagnetic spectrum? So, radio frequency radiation includes radio waves that is used in NMR and microwaves that is used in EPR. Is at the low energy end of the electromagnetic spectrum it is a type of non-ionizing radiation. So, this information you should know and also in the beginning I have showed you the electromagnetic spectrum starting from UV to the higher energy or lower wavelength to higher wavelength. Okay. Try to be familiar with those things so that you know UV, visible, X-ray, all those things where exactly the energy range falls in that electromagnetic radiation spectrum. So now, there is a question. One H requires 200 megahertz of energy to maintain resonance in a magnetic field of 4.7 tesla. If atom X requires 150 megahertz, calculate the amount of energy required to flip the nuclear spin of X. Is it greater than energy required for hydrogen? So that means 1H nucleus requires 200 megahertz of energy to undergo nuclear transition in a magnetic field of 4.7 tesla. And if atom X requires 150 megahertz, so how much energy is needed for this X nuclei to undergo nuclear transition? That is the question. 
So, that means, is it greater than the energy required for hydrogen, one has to calculate. So, here simply we should use the equation E equals h nu and of course, h value we know. And then this value is given for H 150 megahertz, 150 into 10 raised to 6. So, this would come around 993 10 raised to minus 28. This equals to 9.93 into 10 raised to minus 26 joule. So, this is for that means, the energy required is 9.93 into 10 raise to minus 26 joules to cause resonance for x. Next, we will calculate for hydrogen. Similarly, we can calculate for hydrogen here to know the difference. This is for x and this is for h. So, and the value is smaller here, if you see here, the value is smaller. So, you calculate this and you should be able to compare the values here, that is it. Now, let us look into one more example here. Calculate the energy required to flip the spin of a nucleus at 400 megahertz. How about the changing the frequency to 500 and 300? That means, now you should calculate energy required to perform transition of a spin at 400 megahertz field strength. And then we have to see what would happen to the same energy would decrease or increase if we use frequency of 500 or 300 megahertz. So, first let us calculate for 400 megahertz. We will consider 400 megahertz for that one. So, what we get is 2.648 into 10 raise to minus 25 joules. And then if we consider the same for uh, 500, what we get is 3.310. Joules and then we calculate for 300 megahertz. Okay. 1.986 to 10 raise to minus 25 joules. So that means for 500 hertz energy increases for 300 relative to 400 energy decreases. Okay. So, this we know if you recall as magnetic field strength increases the gap whatever the gap is there that increases. So, this is true 500 megahertz we need high energy and 300 megahertz we need low energy and 400 is in between. Okay. So, for CHCl3 
chloroform there is a peak at 2904 hertz in a 1h nmr spectra taken from a 400 megahertz spectrometer convert this value to ppm so that means hertz to ppm ppm to hertz we should be familiar and how to calculate the chemical shift in ppm we have to divide frequency by spectrometer frequency that is it for example here we know 2904 divided by 400 megahertz so that will be 2904 divided by 400 into 10 raise to 6 so this would give 7.26 by 10 raise to 6 means it is 7.26 ppm parts per million of course if you look into one h nmr spectrum of uh, chloroform it shows a sharp peak at 7.26 ppm so this how we can calculate we can convert chemical shift into ppm why we uh, represent chemical shift in ppm is when we represent chemical shift in ppm it is independent of field strength that also we'll look in some problems in my next lecture until then have an excellent time reading and solving more problems on spectroscopy to make yourself familiar with interpretation characterization elucidation of structures of new molecules that you see thank you